So hello, welcome to year two of Weezy Clan. If you're new here, this is episode two of my clan gen series, where I draw my clan cats after a 12 moon same game. If you haven't watched the first episode, you should probably should, but I'm not your mom, so you can do whatever. The thankfully much shorter intro aside, let's dive right into Weasel Clan second year. Starting off with Star Clan cats, we have Tawny Dusk, unfortunately. To quote my notes while playing game, Tawny Dusk fucking dies. They died the literal first moon of the year. Losing our master level medicine cat is obviously not great, but at least Tawny doesn't seem too upset. They were already an elder, and we do still have Whistletooth, who is training an apprentice at the moment. So, they're still able to keep afloat, and that's what Tawny Dusk always wanted, so... Tawny's always been chilling, for the most part, until they notice some concerning things, leading them to wanting to send a gnome to Toilet Star, and the new Medicine Cat Brentance. Now we have Dusk Freckle. Unlike Tawny Dusk, Dusk Freckle is more upset about his death. He died on the moon 15, with his body being found near the den of a fox. He tried to fight the fox. All throughout his life, he was susceptible to fighting things, so he wanted to prove his strength to the point he deluded himself into thinking he could actually take on the larger predator. Clanmates told him to calm down, telling him it was dangerous, with Tarot Star in particular telling him to just wait for the moment to shine. But Dusk couldn't wait, and a fox then moved onto the territory, so in the dark of the night he stepped out of camp and entered the fox den. The fight went terribly, the fox woke up and got a nasty neck bite on Dusk's freckle. Realizing he was over his head, he tried to flee. He got out of the den, but the fox pounced on him. Proceeded to maul him. After his death, Dust tried to keep his head up, but he still has lots of regrets and now watches over the clan, hoping to provide some usefulness. And so far, he has been helping out Tawny by figuring out what is about to go down in the clan. Along to the living, and it doesn't get much better from here, as Twilight Star is not having the best year. He's 126 moons old now, making him an elder. He went from bloodthirsty to fierce, so age has been taking a bit of a toll on him. And this year, he keeps thinking about war, clan relations, and battle strategies and all that. And he also got upset at Whistletooth for not taking his health seriously, which later on, he did lose a life from a qual room, proving his fear right. So I think he's quite paranoid now. That paranoia has only gone up since Dust Threckle's death. It ramped up to the point that when Weedheart accused Twilight Star of being the reason for Dust Threckle's erratic behavior, Twilight freaked out and attacked Weedheart. And with the help of Whis Sneeze Whisker, this is where he got hit a claw wound and killed him. After that, he was counting his lives, so I think Twilight starts paranoid about his health because he thinks he might go to the Dark Forest when he kicks the bucket. Same moon, he got his Elder Sprite and became fierce. He's been less mean, trying to think of more productive things like who's going to be mentor and what to say at gatherings. And when another clanmate brought back a litter of kits, he let it slip past and talk to Weedheart, presumably trying to patch things up. Though his luck hasn't changed at all, he's gotten sick and hurt quite a bit, and most heroically, he got hurt saving his only friend, Thistle Sport, on the last moon of the year from a dog, which now he has a broken bone from that. Now to address the bow around his neck. On moon 18, Twilight Star went missing and came back with a bow and was seen touching noses from a cat from Moose Clan, which, fun fact, Moose Clan is named Moose Clan since my fiancé has a moose persona. But due to this, Twilight Star has been absolutely mocked by certain cats in the clan. So much so, Twilight Star has been eavesdropping on Trickle Shadow, who has been saying some quite concerning things about a potential coup. Sneeze Whisker this year has been stressed and feeling overworked and annoyed with Twilight Star and some other cats like Don Paw. However, he's been keeping his disdain on the down low and trying to suck up to Twilight Star more. Following his orders to the point he joined the fight against Weedheart, this is how he got scarred. He was doing this because a certain cat invited him on a secret plan, which he agreed to, which is why he's been following Twilight more, needing to get buddy buddy with him for info. He's also thinking about other cats a lot, wondering how they're doing and wanting to get to know them better, so he can get more cats in on the plan or bonding with his teammates. This whole act has been hard on him, but one good thing going from him is his mutual crush on Pricklemo whom he's been having cute patrols with. One where he noticed how she wiggles her bum in excitement, which is adorable. Sneeze also has a smaller crush on Thistlespore, which I will say is important for next year, but that's Sneeze Whisker. Whistletooth was really nervous when Tawny Dust passed away, but Whistletooth, wanting to honor their friend, put themselves to work and managed to care for the clan all by himself. 
with there being a lot he needed to worry about this year. One problem being his apprentice Drizzlepaw, he's struggling to find both time and confidence to train. Whistle keep, keeps having bad days and hearing star plan voices with him receiving a vision of a cuckoo bird hatchling throwing out a black and white baby bird out of the nest. Disturbed him along with seeing another dead queen and kids. Man cannot get a break. This time he was with his apprentice, which also sucks as well. Like, why do we have to see dead babies so much? This has been causing him to lose sleep and wish Tawny was still around, even just to help out with prophecies, as Whistle doesn't want to put too much on his already struggling apprentice. Other than a load of works and visions, Whistle has been mainly keeping to himself, except for his little crush on Honey Amber and Thistle Spore, which I find funny. He likes two cats who are all about the rules, but one crush is unrequited, well, another is very much returned, so there's a high chance of a med cat romance in the near future. Which, if that does happen and Whistle has more kits, I hope he doesn't play favorites because Whistle really loves his son Goldspark, but is neutral to his daughter. Which, come on, Whistle, love your kits evenly, please. Whistle Paws, one of Animal Lake's litter of five kits. He is nine moons old and is a sassy, rebellious guy who is clever and confident with words. When he was a kid, he was noisy and would explain why being quiet was boring. So one day he stuck into the med den and thought it was so cool, he would not shut up about being a med cat and would constantly sneak back into the med den to play with herbs. Early on, Whistle knew he was going to be the new apprentice. However, teaching this sassy apprentice is proving to be very difficult, as he will speak over Whistletooth and insist he's doing right when he's doing something wrong. And with how much the year is going on, Whistle ended up throwing him away from work, not wanting there to be accidents due to Drizzlepaw's ego being upset. He fingered Drizzle so much that when he had a vision of a rushing river, he refused to tell anyone. Because of all this anger, the rest of his litter mates don't want to be around him, only making him madder. But hopefully he cools down soon. You know how last year Thistle Spore was keeping an eye on Whistletooth to make sure he didn't break the code any further. Well, this time with eavesdropping and spending time with Whistletooth, this is where the strict 78 moon old Tom has fallen madly in love with Whistletooth. This is where thinks Whistletooth is the prettiest cat in the clan, having the status of escorting the med cat on patrol, and is always doing his best to stand home near Whistletooth to hopefully impress the mad cat. This crust, of course, has led to a lot of inner turmoil with himself as it breaks the rules, and he dedicates his life to the rules. Because of this love, this year has been rocky with him being more distant and snappy, trying to double down on the rules even harder, with him bothering Emerald Lake and eavesdropping on her and her litter, all while talking to his close friend Twilight Star about adding even more rules. This all led to Sissel being distracted, which culminated in him getting attacked by a dog, and Twilight Star having to save him on the last minute of the year. Hopefully that was enough of the wake-up call for him to stop lashing out because of his crush and perhaps get over to the confession. What is what he's currently thinking of, and we'll have to see about it next year. As I am recording this, I will also note that my cat is sitting on top of my fish tank and has been bothering me part of the session. Now in correct order, we have Prickle Mouse, who I drew in a way I like a lot more this time around. At the start of the year, Prickle was really excited and wondering about Pheasant Kit, hoping to get her or one of her litter mates as an apprentice. She also, of course, started having a crush on Sneeze Whisker and goals of being a deputy, and meeting a cat named Bubbling Lightning on a patrol, but then things took a turn when she got injured by a hawk trying to save Don Paul on Moon 22. As it left her both scarred and now with a weaker leg, making it harder for her to climb trees and run like how she used to love. And while he knows it was for the better of the clan to save the apprentice, and her injury could have been worse, she can't help but feel demotivated now. So good luck to her first gal, and hope the next year is better for her. Honey Ember has had a rough year. He has become nervous this year due to overhearing Sneeze Whisker talking to Thistle Spore about setting up a coup and recruiting cats to help. Two cats didn't notice him, so he listened to the entire plan and he's unsure what to do, as he's fearing for his life, as he's not sure what the other cats involved would take vengeance on him or his loved ones, so he's been very paranoid, trying to find out more info before he acts all well. He's been praying to start trying to protect his loved ones, and later in the year, he uncovered another member of the coup, and has been sticking close to camp, trying to quietly sabotage things. However, all this stuff has led to him acting off and being quite snappy, 
So him and Spotted Spots had a massive fight as he wouldn't tell Spotted what was wrong. And it escalated till they needed to be broken up, which really sucks because they were close to being mates with one another, which I would have loved. But maybe after all the drama, they'll patch things up, hopefully. Spotted, as mentioned before, had a huge fight with Honey Ember early on in the year. When he tried to talk to M. Honey Ember about his behavior, and it really set the mood for the rest of the year as Spot is not having a good time as well. Trying to put his nose into his work, volunteering for Dawn Patrol, and chasing off a rogue that was weirdly wandering the territory, which he boasted about, but then some rocks fell on his sail on Moon 16 and was spotted losing his tail. He continued to try and put on a brave face and keep training, but after that he was way left so of a go-getter the ear. Things also were not helped by him getting a Star Clan vision of plants growing out of a dead cat, which, wow, a lot of visions this year. But he talked with Briscoe Pearl Mouse about it, and she took him aside to try and decipher what it can mean. They are now a bit suspicious of Weedheart and Thistlespore, but they are unsure of the omen's true meaning. Speaking of Prickle Mouse, Spotted still has an unrequited crush on her, and I think he now understands she doesn't think of him the same way, but that doesn't help Spotted's feelings for her, unfortunately. All I hope for Spotted Spots has a better year, year next year, but I think that may be hard with what's happening. Weedheart has been having an interesting year, as you can see. First off, he brought home a litter of kits he swore up and down weren't biologically his, but he still wanted to adopt them. And he also got his Emerald Lake at the end of the year, and has been trying to be a good stepdad. But at the start of the year, Moon 15, he tried to challenge Twilight Star, demanding he stepped down. And that he is just like his father's Silent Star, essentially repeating his mentor's criticisms. And so he was attacked, with Sneeb's Whisker going for his tail, and Twilight using the same Dark Force move he used on Trickle Shadow on him. And he lost an eye as a result, and has been struggling with vision since. He now has a very blatant blind spot, just like his mentor, which, surprise, surprise, he's been talking to, along with the rogue group, him and Trickle Shadow have negated it briefly, which is where his litter of kits came from, as he did have a fling with a rogue from the group. His relationship with the rogue fell apart when his and Emerald legs took off. Soon after, he recruited her into the plan after a patrol where he opened up to Emerald about being ignored by Star Clan, and she comforted him. So this group, despite Weedheart's injury, have been doing really good, but it will stay good is the question. Now his and his kits are three moons old, and I gave the litter flower names. We have a Syria Kit, an intention-seeking play fighter, and then Heather Kit, a sweet avid play fighter, then Rosemary Kit, a sweet kit who likes to plash and puddles. And currently there's not much about them other than they're cute. Emma and Lake has had a busy year. Made stuff aside, she had a five-kit litter with a cat from another clan on Moon 14. Going to see the father is Tickercaw from Spider Clan, whom she fell in puppy love with during a gathering, when they spent the night together and had met up several things, only to be cut off after Emerald got pregnant. As Tickercaw and her had an argument over the kits, Emerald then started feeling unappreciated and took comfort in Weedheart, who related to her struggles, leading to her falling up for him. She also went to from being in awe of Twilight's leadership to eavesdropping him and looking down on Twilight after what happened with Weedheart. Now she agrees with everything Weedheart says after seeing how brutal he can be. So can we just note how nice she is to the med cat? She had the status of helping them out three times this year. Probably because one of her kids is the medicine cat apprentice, but it's still super cute. Spark managed to get his warrior name this year and were named for their obedience, but he also got an apprentice year. Raccoon Paw, one of Emerald Lake's kits, and I can't help but find it funny that the faithful Gold Spark has the interest in a dark forest Raccoon Paw, who has been nothing but trouble and only nine moons younger than his mentor. Like, what are you doing, Twilight? Just give Sneeze Whisker an apprentice already. This year has been really simple for him. He's mainly focused on wrangling his apprentice. I will also mention him and Weedheart. And Emerald Lake managed to find an abandoned kit when Gold Spark was still an apprentice, and we'll get to that kit soon. Speckle, named after her wit, had an adventurous year. She started off quite feisty with statuses like always looking for a fight, but after Emerald Lake recovered from birth, managed to round her down to a charismatic gal. Now when she said in boat, she was named Crooked Freckle by Twilight, but she was mad to be named after a cat that just recklessly passed away and was divisive in the clan. He and her dad ended up protesting until it was changed to Speckle, what she accepted. After that, she was really calm the rest of the year, with the only bad thing happening is a cat she was substitute mentoring for got hit with a monster, aka a car. 
That apprentice now has a broken back, but thankfully she didn't blame herself, nor did the apprentice blame her. But on to the next cat. Besson Paw is a calm, timid old apprentice who was a part of the five kit litter. I like to think of her as more gossipy emerald-like, as she's a bit catty with her sister, as her sister got the status of listening to gossip from Pheasant Paw. She also likes listening to stories from Trickle Shadow, but she's still pretty nice. She's confident with words as well as being a good climber. She also has a pr been apprenticed to her mom, and on one of the patrols, she sassed her mom, and she started an argument about what she was teaching, and Emerald Lake wouldn't teach her without an apology. Like, Emerald, please get along well with your daughter. Despite her extra spunk, this year has been really tame with her. Not much to say about her other than I'm excited to see more from her, and I can't help but like how round I made her. The Tin Moon all down Pa with a feisty kit, refusing to take naps and such, and that translated to her apprentice days with her being troublesome and vengeful. With her being really rude and shrieking on her duties and gossiping, it's bad enough that Twilight Stone decided to take her on as an apprentice himself. And I think it's working. Somehow she started daydreaming about having a mate in kits, and if she wants that, she has to be nicer. She's also a fast runner and a good summer like girl. You are an over an achiever, and I love it. With that, I hope Dom Pa behaves better, and on to the next cat. As mentioned in Gold Spark section, Raccoon Pa is very rowdy. He's ten moons old and playful, and shockily, he has a connection to the Dark Force, which is a very interesting combo, along with the fact on a patrol of his mentor, he's revealed the nightmares, and unlike Weedheart, Goldspark took it seriously, acknowledging that it might be Dark Force related. So far, Raccoon Pa has not done anything bad yet, so I'm saying it's just an interest. But we'll see if it stays good and if these visions continue. I will also quickly note that Raccoon Pa has the ability to travel to the Dark Forest really easily, which is what he's doing and why he's been having these nightmares. Now for Frost Pa. First stop, Frost Pa was in the apprentice that was hit by the monster on the patrol. And he got a broken back from it. He's worried if he'll be able to walk again, and he blames Weedheart, his mentor, for not being there to mentor him on that patrol, even though Weedheart was sick and unable to realistically be on that patrol. Frostbog still can't help but be upset with him, and he hates the fact that he's with his mom currently. I feel bad for Frostball. Hopefully he gets better, but things are looking pretty grim for him. But he hasn't been able to do much. On to the next cat, Firepaw, who is a new face we have in the clan. She's seven moons old, and she's a sweetie. She was found by Gold when he was in his apprentice days, along with Weedheart and Emerald. She was nursed back to health and hasn't done much, but she's been adopted by Trickle Shadow and has been keep having cute interactions with him as a kit. Now she listens and agrees with everything he says, and that's about it, which is why I drew her with Trickle Shadow since there's not much about her currently. Now on to Trickle Shadow. Trickle Shadow managed to come back, and he instantly retired, not because he wanted to, but because he needed more free time to converse with the rogue group, who agreed to distract cats when it's time in exchange for a small territory, and to be made a clan. Trickle Shadow has no intentions on doing this and plans on double-crossing them a few minutes after the coup. Little note, one of the cats, Ezra, had the status missing Trickle Shadow, so maybe he had also has been having a little fling, but we'll have to see. Speaking of the coup, the plan is to get most of the neutral warriors out of the clan, and either scare them off or eliminate Twilight Star and any cat that's close to him. The plan is to go down when Weedheart's kits are about the age of Apprentice. Twilight Star is at a weak point. We have Trickle Shadow, Weedheart, Sneeze Whisker, Emerald Leg, and Spiderpaw, whom he does actually care about, ganging up on Twilight Star in hopes to overwhelm him and take him down. And with Trickle Shadow done, we finally got over the build-up of a year. I've had so much fun making these videos and drawing all these cats and everything, and I'm really, really connected to this series, so there will be more episodes as well. And I, I definitely cannot leave it off as a cliffhanger currently, so there will definitely be a year three. Thank you for watching, and I hope you tune into year three, and goodbye!